Indian paper money, uh, I've covered from the day uh, it began to the present. So, the, and, and through all the facets and the different periods and the different uh, colonization by the different countries. So, all those aspects are covered in this. I'll try to keep it brisk. I'll try more, more importantly to show the images and um, I, you'll have a voiceover from the back. <clears throat> we begin with the early banknotes of private and presidency banks. Uh, banknotes for India was first uh, issued by the presidents, uh, the private banks. In the private banks were there during the East India Company and uh, the first bank that was established was the Bank of Hindustan in, eight, in 1770. And most likely the banknotes that were issued were the early 1800s. The, uh, the lowest denomination was uh, rupees 4 and the highest was one, rupees 1000 at that time. The early banknotes also had a very unique denomination or a special denomination of 4 rupees, 8 rupees, 15 rupees and 16 rupees. I'll explain to you why they have chose this denomination as we go along. Next. This is a, a Bank of Hindustan 10 rupees banknote. Uh, it looks like a carpet. It has an elephant on one side and it has the... Uh, <coughs> it has a lady which is manifested like the Ganga on the left. Like I told you, the early banknotes next to very were also in the denominations of four, eight, uh, and sixteen. The reason for this is that the one rupee was uh, sorry, sixteen rupees got you a gold mohar, meaning that uh, each the gold mohar was weighing eleven point six six grams. So if you give eleven silver coins of eleven point six six grams. Uh, you got one gold more. So, it's very now easy to equate the price of gold, which is uh, uh, 16 rupees to, uh, for 11.66 grams. And this is what they look like, the silver rupee and the gold more. And uh, if you equate it back, uh, you know, one gram of gold was 1 rupee 37, uh, 1 rupee 47 paise. And then, subsequently, uh, uh, we also had variations in the various denominations. You had 15 rupees to a, uh, to a gold mohar and also uh, 14. 14 was in the Madras presidency. However, uh, after the Coinage Act of 1835, the weight of the coin got standardized and were denominated in companies rupees instead of Sikha rupees. And that was uh, 15 rupees was to the uh, to a one gold coin. But of course, the weight was brought down from 11.66 grams proportionately to 10.76. See, <clears throat> India was divided in three presidencies when the East India Company were here. We had the Bengal presidency, which was the capital of the British, the Bombay presidency, and the Madras presidency. So, we all the, all the uh, the, the, we had uh, notes that were issued from all these presidencies and, and show them as we go along. The Bank of Bengal was one of the earliest banks and the uh, earliest surviving note issued by the Bank of Bengal is a 250 Sikha rupees note. It, the note is numbered 108 and it's dated 3rd September 1812. If you notice to the right, the signature has been cut and these are uniface. The meaning of this, you know, the signature being cut is that the, uh, the note was taken back and it was exchanged for, uh, for the specie. That is, they got back either the, their money in silver or in gold. Uh, if you also notice, there is a, the note is cut into half. It was a practice those days that uh, for the sake of safety, the note was, half the note was sent by post 
and after the person to whom it was sent acknowledged that uh, they received it, the second half was sent. These two were joined together, then went to the bank for exchange. So this note two of two, or the earlier surviving note is displayed at the museum in Bangalore. We also in, had the Calcutta Bank, which was there for a very short period. This was also there in the Cal Calcutta Presidency. These are the other variants of uh, uh, the Calcutta Bank. We saw 10. This is a 20 Sikha rupees. Okay. The reverse of the 20 Sikha rupees. And if you also see that the, the notes have um, various annotations in um, in Bengali because that's where the language that, that was the language that was used uh, at that period. The Bombay Presidency, the most known bank in the, the Bombay Presidency was the Bank of Bombay, and it had notes from. Uh, 10 rupees up to 10,000 rupees. Uh, this is an issued note of Bank of Bombay. Uh, and if you see on top, it also has a Persian script, Urdu script, Gujarati in the bottom and Kathy as well. And uh, it, it is a all the signatures at that time were manuscript or hand signed. You will also see some serial numbers which are on either side of the note. Uh, there are also printed ones and also uh, the notes are uh, in the local language. In the case, in this case, being Bank of Bom Bombay being there, it is in Gujarati. The reason for the, uh, for, the, for the serial numbers on either side is just in case the note is cut into half and then sent uh, the serial number should be there on either side of the note. The Bank of Madras uh, came into being in 1843. However, there was uh, something called the Madras Government Bank, which was established in 1806, and the Asiatic Bank. These two banks merged into uh, what is called a um, Bank of Madras. If you go back, you'll see the picture of uh, the government bank, Madras government bank, which had a very unique denomination. Their uh, denomination was in pagodas, star pagodas, and this is a two star pagoda note, uh, or seven rupees. Uh, two star pagodas was equal to seven, seven rupees. Because the exchange rate was 14 rupees was the uh, conversion to a gold coin. Of course, the weight was lesser. The Asiatic Bank had uh, also issued note, but no, uh, what you, uh, no issued note of Asiatic Bank is seen. This is a 500 star pagodas or 1750 rupees. These two banks uh, uh, merged uh, to form the Bank of Madras in uh, 1843. 1857 saw the Sepoy mutiny and uh, the exit of the East India Company and uh, the British government took over India. The, one of the first things Queen Victoria did was to send Sir James Wilson to India to establish a currency department. And he also was responsible to bring in uh, the first income tax uh, that the Indians are paying till today. So in 1861, the government of India under the British prohibited issue of all negotiable instruments by every bank, corporate body or persons, including private banks. Henceforth, 
private banks, including presidency banks, ceased to issue their own currency notes. <clears throat> they took over the issue uh, of uh, uh, the bank note from the private and presidency banks from 1861. The first issue of uh, the Government of India notes under the British had the portrait of Queen Victoria on the top left and had denominations, the lowest denomination being 10 up to 1000. It also had circles of issue which you see just in, in the middle, just beside the date. It reads here 1864 June 10 Bombay. So uh, what really happens here in, in, is that uh, there were the three, there were circles of issue, there were the five main circle of issues which went to seven subsequently. And they also had what we call is uh, uh, joint circles. Like, like in this case, you see Karachi, which is spelt K-U-R-R-A-C-H-E. So it was a dual circle. And because it was a dual circle, uh, you have two signatories uh, on the node. So as we go along, I'll show you this, this remained in... Uh, this portrait series remained uh, in circulation for a very short period. Keep that image of the Victoria. This remained in circulation for a very short period because the quality of paper use was very thin and it was also <coughs> observed that there were a lot of forgeries uh, even in those days. <coughs> Post this in, in 1867, that is, the portrait notes were there from 1861 to 1867. Then, <clears throat> then there was a change because they wanted to bring in more security to these uh, uh, the notes. So what they did was they brought in again uniface notes with the green underprint. <clears throat> these came in single circles and in dual circles. The denomination of five came much later. In uh, 1867, it was only the 10 rupees upwards that were there in circulation. Uh, but the five rupees came into circulation in um, 1871. We're jumping too fast. These are again uh, notes of dual circles, Karachi or, or Bombay, signed by F.C. Harrison. And if you see as, uh, as it went along, initially the, the serial numbers were only on the top and later on they added uh, serial numbers at the bottom making it four serial numbers. After which the uniface notes uh, changed color from green to red and uh, they were in existence till 1930. However, in 1922, uh, it was decided that after 60 years that they have a, a note with the, what we call the portrait notes of George V. These were first issued in denominations of 5 and 10 and uh, later on they had Issues of uh, uh, 50, uh, 100, 1000 and 10,000. But before this, in 1917, uh, there was a, the war brought in shortage of, of uh, money, of silver, and uh, required that uh, India, the India government bring in uh, a note of a small denomination, which did not exist. So, uh, one rupee note along with the note of two and a half rupees was conceived in the year 1917. And only three years ago, we celebrated the hundred years of the one rupee note. These were in, uh, uh, issued in booklets. When I say booklets, 25% of these notes were in booklets, like, like a checkbook. And the remaining 75 came in packets of 25 notes. This one rupee note, uh, which you see the obverse and reverse, had uh, the image of a coin of uh, Queen, uh, sorry, King George on the top left, 
And uh, in reality, it was a promissory note because for the first time, uh, I promised to pay the bearer the sum of rupees. Uh, one rupee was uh, uh, added at, uh, as a uh, universalized note at any office of issue. And in the, in the accounts of the government, the one rupee was treated at par with a, with a silver coin. We also had what they call as a fractional note of two rupees eight annas or rupee, uh, two and a half rupees. This uh, was again brought in during the shortage of 1917 and this denomination wasn't popular and it was there for, the, uh, for, a, for a very short time, very short period. This is what it looks like, very similar to the one rupee, but uh, it had a green uh, underprint. Uh, and uh, on the reverse, it had eight languages. And post this in 1935, George V uh, uh, died uh, in 1936. So, how? Uh, before he died, there was a one rupee that was uh, brought in in the form of a... This is because of the war again, that there was a shortage of silver and a one rupee was needed. But before the note got issued, uh, George VI died and this uh, issue was shelved. How... What happened was they were not... Uh, they were one of the uh, controllers of currency decided that they should destroy these notes. But one had, the sen I think, better sense prevailed and they... Uh, even though they were printed, they were held back in England uh, in a warehouse. Uh, this note, even though it was dated 35, was brought into India in 1940 because the Second World War uh, caused uh, uh, issues of uh, um, shortage of metal and uh, the notes that were lying in England were shipped to India and were issued in 1940. In the meantime, a similar note of uh, same dimension were, uh, and same design was printed in India as well. The, the notes with the alphabets A, B, C, D were printed overseas and the E and F were printed locally in Nasik in India. After the, after the portrait notes of George V, uh, we had uh, the notes of, notes of uh, King George VI come in. In, in this too, the one rupee note that you see uh, uh, is um, guaranteed by the government. In the, in the government accounts, one rupee notes were treated at par with metallic coins like I told you. And the most important thing is that it's not signed by the control of currency, which, who was the signing authority at that time, but by the Secretary Finance Department, Government of India. This note was issued in 1941. These are the these are a few of the portrait notes of uh, George George V and George VI. Uh, the interesting uh, part in this is that they had the circle of issue printed on the notes. Uh, if you see, Kavanpur is circled uh, uh, in between the watermark and the po portrait in the middle. Uh, and this is the only note that doesn't have a title because um, uh, it is signed by J.B. Taylor. And it says for the government of India, but no title on the note at all. This is the only note in the history of Indian paper money that doesn't have a title. However, uh, George VI note, 100 rupees, uh, if you see is, uh, of course, these were issued post-independence. The reason is that the word Kanpur, K-M-P-U-R, earlier, when the, well, once the British were there, uh, it was spelled as C A W N P O R E, and uh, so this indicates that 
these notes were issued and printed post independence that means it, it, because the word kanpur got coined in the year 1948 i'm bringing up your attention to something very interesting, interesting. very interesting. King Edward VIII was the eldest son of George V. He was he had he was the person he was the king of the United Kingdom uh, and the Emperor of India in 1936. He proposed to marry Wallace Simpson, uh, who was an American socialite and who also had two ex-husbands. This was then disapproved in the United Kingdom. Hence. King Edward VIII was abdicated from the throne and succeeded by his younger brother George VI. Hence, you do not see any notes, even though a note of his was uh, um, was designed and printed uh, at Nasik. This is a register print. You will find this uh, placed in uh, the museum. Uh, Edward VIII looked very much like his brother George VI. And this note is signed by Osborne Smith. Osborne Smith was um, resigned from the post of uh, uh, the governor in the, in the year 1936, uh, after which the J.B. Taylor took over. Reserve Bank of India was born in 1935 as the Central Note Issuing Authority and they were also printing notes or issuing, issuing notes uh, for the government of India uh, printed in India India, and uh, the, they, were, they, they, were, they became the central, uh, they were the only authority, became a federal, a federal bank for uh, issue of these notes. The first two rupees notes were issued in 1943 with the portrait of George VI. Rupees 1000 and 10,000 were demonetized in 1946 to curb black money. These are the Reserve Bank of India notes because they changed from the Government of India to the Reserve Bank of India. The notes of uh, Government of India were all printed in um, printed in England and uh, brought to India and then uh, circulated. However, uh, after 1935, all notes that were printed were printed in India. However, the paper used to come from England, uh, but the printing was done uh, locally in the country. If you just go back, this 10,000 rupee note <coughs> is uh, of Circle Lahore. You can find that under the uh, under the portrait of George VI and signed by J.B. Taylor. <clears throat> it's very interesting to note that India also, uh, that India notes were also used in Burma because India was part of the British Empire till 1935. And uh, we had notes with the circle of Rangoon. Uh, after 1935, uh, what they did was they used the existing British India notes that were in circulation in Burma in, and in India and overprinted them uh, for use in Burma alone. Initially, they, uh, the overprints were in black and uh, there was a resistance by the locals that uh, the black wasn't red. Hence, they brought in uh, overprint in red. These were the Government of India notes initially with the portrait of George VI. These were the ones that were printed in England and uh, initially were in black overprint and then changed to uh, red. After, after, the, after, the, after this, uh, in 1937, the, I'll come back to this uh, in a while. In 1937, the um, Central Monetary Authority of India issued notes for Burma only. This note was, even though it was Reserve Bank of India, if you go to the next slide, you will see that uh, uh, even though it's a Reserve Bank of India, it is, I promise to the pay the bearer demand of 
5 rupees at any office of issue in Burma. That means these are specific notes to be used in Burma. Since uh, Reserve Bank was handling the financial affairs of the country, uh, you will find Reserve Bank of India on the title. However, this uh, lasted for very less because after which the Japanese took over Burma and if you go to the previous one, and then the uh, you know a, a Burma Currency Board was established in uh, after after the after after the war and up to 1946, which also had uh, notes by the Burma Currency Board and the Burma Military Administration. These notes were only uh, used in Burma and were not legal tender in Burma. And Reserve Bank of India was the only bank to have simultaneously issued notes for two countries during a, a civilian room. We came to an interesting uh, situation. In 1947, India and Pakistan was one country. And uh, the, when the partition happened in 1947, uh, Reserve Bank was given the liberty to run the monetary affairs of Pakistan for one year. Uh, however, to distinguish between the notes of India and Pakistan, it was decided then to have an issue of uh, the same British India notes, but uh, used an amended plate to add the words government of Pakistan in English in the watermark area and Hukumat Pakistan in the watermark area below. And just to let you know that uh, the similar looking notes were also being used in India. Of course, these notes were there till they used by Pakistan till their own money of State Bank of Pakistan was brought and these were withdrawn uh, in Pakistan and then they started uh, using their own currency. India not only uh, was colonized by the British. India also was colonized by the uh, by the Portuguese. Uh, of course, everyone knows that Goa was one of the biggest territories. Initially, the uh, the, uh, the Portuguese issued notes by the Department of Public Finance or Janta de Fazenda, Janta de Fazenda Publica. Initially, these notes were printed in Goa itself. Subsequent to this, in, from 1906, all uh, uh, Portuguese colonies, the issue for banknotes was entrusted to Banco Nacional Antramarino, meaning the National Overseas Bank. And uh, this bank issued uh, notes for all Portuguese colonies, not only in India, but wherever they were, they had colonized them. This was the first issue of the uh, uh, the Portuguese note, which has the title Janta Fazenda Publica. This is a 10 rupees, uh, which is um, hand signed by six different people. And in uh, they first came out in 1882. They had denominations of uh, 10 up to 50, or sorry, up to 500. And uh, they were replaced in 1906 by this beautiful looking note uh, which had four denominations 5, 10, uh, 20 and 50 rupees. This note is a, a note bearing 0001 which is the first note of this series that came in. Uh, the entire set of four notes of all the four denominations uh, is there displayed at the museum for those that wish to Whoever comes to Bangalore and uh, has the opportunity can look at these. They also had a denomination called rupiahs. From uh, the, the this happened in uh, 1945, but before that they had issues of 1924 and 1938 as well. After which, they had a, 
uh, issue in Spudos because the Portuguese decided that by a decree that all their currencies anyway should have the word Spudos uh, rather than the local currency. Of course, you know, if you see there are four separate languages uh, other than uh, Spanish, which is uh, Urdu, Gujarati, Marathi, and Kannada as well. Okay. The, as I told you that India was colonized by the French and one of the bigger territories of uh, Pondicherry uh, uh, is very well known today and notes by the Indo-French ter territories was issued by the Bank of Bank de Li Indochina for the uh, colonial territories in India. There were four or five issues uh, starting uh, from uh, 1875 to uh, till the time in 1960 when they left. This is a note of 17 June 1915, uh, 50 rupees. To me, this is one of the most beautiful notes with the two elephants on either side. And uh, more importantly, it has Tamil as a language uh, with the Kannada too, which is uh, there above in uh, Kannada, Urdu. Uh, just to indicate that these belong to the colony uh, of India because similar notes were also issued for the other colonies, but in the local, uh, it was, uh, the denominations were written in the local language. Next. I'll, I'll run you through some very interesting uh, information or facts on Indian paper money that from 1917 to 1994, the one rupee note had the year inscribed in the image of the coin on the reverse of the note. The printing of one rupee notes was discontinued in 1994 and after a gap of nearly 21 years, the one rupee was reintroduced in 2015. Uh, if you can see on the reverse of the note, there is the image of this coin and uh, the, there is a year of issue with, or there is a year at the back, which need not be the year of issue as well. Uh, the language panel below the notes is, uh, was 11 and then it increased to 13 to 15 and now it is currently 17. This is the note that was brought back into circulation in 2015. And uh, more or less the design of the note remained the same. The only thing that changed uh, was the color and uh, the year was added on the, and the coin, the, the coin was changed and the year was added at the back of the coin. And if you notice, even this note is, uh, a government of India note. The rest of the denominations from 2 to uh, 10,000 uh, 10, rupees are all notes issued by the Reserve Bank of India. The only note that is issued by the government of India is uh, the 1 rupee note. And it is signed by the Secretary of Finance. The Reserve Bank of India notes are signed by the Governor of Reserve Bank of India. There was a denomination of 20 which was there in the Uniface series, which was discontinued in 1910. But after a gap of 60 years, it was reintroduced. It was a beautiful looking note with a with a image of the parliament on the reverse and a very nice colored note of uh, in, in orange or saffron as it's called. Printing of banknotes of 1500 were discontinued after the Reserve Bank was established in 1935. 50 rupees was reintroduced in, uh, in 1975 after a gap of nearly 40 years. This was the note that was discontinued in 1935. This is a 50 rupees of the government of India uh, of, uh, with the portrait of King George V and having the circle of Kaunpo. This got oh, 
withdrawn in 1935 and post that in 1975 we had the issue of this denomination by the Reserve Bank of India uh, in the year 1975. After India got independent in the year 1949, uh, the first denomination, the first notes that were issued were of 1 rupee and 10 rupees. All the uh, denominations were issued on Republic Day of 1950. Hence, they are called Republic of India notes. This was the earliest one rupee note that was issued uh, in the in the beginning, along with the ten rupee. And if you if you see, it is signed by C. D. Deshmukh, who who was the governor of Reserve Bank. Mr. C. D. Deshmukh also was the first Indian governor to have signed a note during the British prior to India's independence. Next slide. If you see here, the vignette of the sailing boat uh, was probably the most used vignette. It remained uh, in circulation in various forms because the size of this note was large. Even when it got reduced, the sailing boat ha was there for 40 years. So the people who are, who are in India and have used 10 rupees. Uh, we are uh, very familiar in seeing this note, uh, this vignette of the sailing boat. <clears throat> See, 1969, uh, you can show the pictures, I'll tell all this. 1969 uh, brought in, brought in uh, the Mahatma Gandhi birth cent uh, cent uh, centenary. To celebrate the birth centenary, the then Prime Minister Mr. Moraji Desai wanted uh, a commemorative issue for the uh, celebrating the Mahatma Gandhi birth centenary note. So, uh, to get the, the vignette of this, uh, the Reserve Bank of India had uh, uh, issue, you know, advertised on the paper that uh, And they advertised in the paper that they wished to, uh, uh, they called for people to submit paintings for this. And uh, in all in all, 666 entries came in uh, for getting the, just go to the witness. Yes, stop there. Go to show the Krishna's portraits. This gentleman, N.S. Subhakrishna, who was an artist from Mysore, he submitted the entry and his entry is the one that you see in the commemorative issue. And in those days, he was given a grand prize of rupees 1000 for the portrait he designed for the Mahatma Gandhi uh, Centenary Notes. He is also very well known because he's also done some portraits of the prime, then Prime Ministers and uh, Presidents of India, which uh, the walls of uh, the Parliament. Just go to the note. This is this is his drawing. These drawings and, or paintings, uh, he, he given several entries, total nine in all. Those are in the museum for all to come and see. Next slide. See, it is the same uh, portrait or uh, image. Uh, that is used in all the denominations except in the, in the rupee one. The rupee one was designed, uh, a coin also was brought in for the Mahatma Gandhi uh, birth centenary. Uh, there was a designer by name B.P. Chitness. He designed the one rupee note and also a stamp of 75 paisa for the Mahatma Gandhi commemorative issue. The, the, the obverse and image of the note was designed by Mr. Chitness. If you go to the note, one rupee note, the same, <coughs> the image of the coin on the obverse and on the reverse, uh, what you find also comes in the form of a coin as well, a commemorative coin. In 1954, notes of the high denomination notes of 1000, 5000 and 10,000 were reintroduced. 
these were demonetized in 1978. The 1,000, 5,000 and the 10,000. Of course, by then they had a circle called New Delhi uh, because the capital from uh, for India shifted from Calcutta to New Delhi. Earlier it was Delhi and it became New Delhi. Another interesting feature is, go to the next slide, that every note issued by Reserve Bank of India after independence has two uh, specific features. Feature is the Ashoka pillar and the Reserve Bank of India logo. It will be in the notes in some form or the other. If it is not the, you know, the, the, the main feature, but it will feature in an, an, another place. And the logo of the Reserve Bank. Either it could appear in the front of the note or the reverse of the note. When the demonetization happened in 1978, uh, the highest denomination in circulation was rupees 100. And uh, for nearly nine years, uh, the higher, 100 rupees was the highest denomination till a new um, uh, what you call denomination was brought into circulation, which was uh, uh, the 500. This this denomination came into circulation after 65 years. This had this was the first uh, note which had the portrait of Mahatma Gandhi. This portrait was designed by Delaru, and uh, most likely the note also was designed by Delaru at that time. The, then after that, we had a denomination of uh, 1000 uh, 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 between 78 to uh, the year 2000 for 22 years, we had denominations of 100 and 500. Uh, go to the next slide. If you see that these, uh, this note came in the year 2000, it had uh, uh, serial numbers with two different colors. Uh, blue on top and red below. Nineteen two thousand sixteen. Next slide. Two thousand sixteen. What happened was the uh, denominations of five hundred and thousand got demonetized, and uh, a new denomination of uh, uh, five hundred and a uh, new denomination of 2000 was introduced uh, in, in the year after the denominations of uh, the old denominations of 500 and 1000 got demonetized and th th these are currently in circulation and they have been there since 5 years sometime later we also got a denomination in, that is in two, 2017 uh, rupees 200 uh, was introduced, uh, which denomination never existed till the year 2017. Is a very interesting feature of the Indian notes was that between the years of 1959 uh, to 90, 1996, a special note was designed for use in the Persian Gulf state, uh, which, which included Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, Muscat and Oman. These, these had a specific prefix, which is Z. These were the same notes that were in circulation in India. The only difference was the color changed. The color of one rupee, if you go back, was uh, the notes for the um, government of India notes which were used in India was purple, the, this color was changed to exact same note was printed in the color of red. Same with the case of, of 5 rupees. 5 rupees used in India was uh, uh, green and this became orange. Only difference in the denominations of 5, 10, 100 was that the when you say where, below the promise tax, it reads a promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of 5. It's at the 
office of issue at Bombay. This is not there, was not, is not present in the notes that were used currently, that were used currently in, in India at that time. So, uh, the next one is the, uh, um, they also had in 1959 notes printed for uh, Hajj pilgrims. The reason for this was that, uh, uh, that the, the Hajis that went from India traveled into Saudi Arabia were given a quota of money which uh, was carried to Saudi Arabia and most times some of them changed this money to Riyal uh, and then in turn changed that Riyal to pounds and brought back the pound. And when they did so, they made, a, made money uh, in that because there was no foreign exchange at that time. Foreign exchange uh, rates were not established at that time. Post-1959, the foreign exchange uh, rates were established and then it became, uh, just go to the picture. Foreign exchange rates became established and it became foolish to carry money and do two types of swap before uh, uh, they lost money instead. Uh, these probably are the most collectible notes uh, by anyone because, uh, because of the word Hajj written on the top two which is circled for your information. And these were also payable at, uh, at the office of issue at Bombay. Meaning to say, if you go back, meaning to say that, you know, when these notes were with the, the banks in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, they needed to be sent to uh, the Reserve Bank in Bombay for circulation. Not for circulation, for encashment. <coughs> Usmania notes of uh, Hyderabad, these were the only notes uh, where the British gave uh, a princely state to have their own money. Uh, this was a privilege given by the British and this was because there was shortage of metal in World War I in 1718 and uh, Hyderabad was the only princely state that was allowed to have its own currency. These beautiful notes of uh, the Nizam were printed by Waterloo and Sons uh, in denominations of 1 up to uh, 1000. Uh, however, the note of one was in the color black and uh, they were not popular and they were withdrawn. Till much later when they were brought in because, I, they, because of the shortage of silver again which arose during the Second World War. This is a very interesting note which is uh, issued by the princely states of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, they were notes with limited circulatory liability. Maybe they were used for tax purposes. Uh, it's done on a hand-drawn plate, very crude, but uh, uh, very good looking notes and very nice note to handle as well. This is a note number one and uh, uh, most of the language is either uh, Urdu or Persian and there is a little bit of Kaiti in that. They also had uh, coupons issued by uh, Zhangatra and uh, Morvi states and this was, they were given, these princely states were given permission to have their money again to, to issue for uh, what what they call is uh, because of shortage of silver and the value in this case is quite large and this is known as the Morby State Savala. We just pause here. I'll give a background of these cash coupons. Uh, there were 36 princely states that uh, ran out of metal totally and because of which um, only 36 princely states were given permission, permission to issue um, cash coupons starting with a denomination of one paise or which is one bar 192 of a rupee, which is very, very less in value. Uh, and uh, they're basically paper tokens, some are on cardboard as well.
India has was responsible for the prisoners of war, starting with uh, prisoners of the Anglo Boer War of 1899. Uh, there were German uh, uh, that were brought in uh, from from South Africa to Sri Lanka, from, from from where they were brought into India, and they had a couple of camps in India. One of the camps of uh, uh, that he showed money was the, the camp at Trichinapalli and there was a camp in KT in the Nilgiris in India which is amongst the hills. This note of uh, 10 rupees, this uh, Anglo Boa coupon of 10 rupees probably is the only one that is remaining in the world. The second world war saw a uh, lot of camps that were uh, the Second World War prisoners that were there uh, with, because of the British. We had six such locations having um, uh, camps in India, one of which was Clementown, Dioli, which is North India, Yol, and uh, Delhi. Bangalore also had a camp where the, the Italian prisoners were station. Uh, with this, I think it's time for me because uh, uh, it was allotted an hour. Before I end this, uh, I wish to tell you that uh, a museum is created uh, with all these notes, all the specimen notes, probably the best uh, array and on display of Indian notes that you'd ever see. Anyway, it's only not uh, notes. It is also has all the related material as well that uh, you will see displayed in this place. A website is also sh shortly underway and uh, it will be live very soon. Thank you all for listening so patiently. I, I, the, the name of the website is called IndianPaperMoneyMuseum.com and it will be live um, within the next week. Thank you very much and I thank all of you who stayed on to listen and I thank uh, Fabrizio. Thank you, thank you, Rezwan. Um, we usually follow up with few questions. If you sure. still have 10, 15 minutes. Um, guys, if anyone wants to ask question directly, please unmute yourself one by one. Good evening, this is uh, Suresh from Bangalore. Sir, it was a wonderful presentation. You have covered close to 220 to 200 plus years of Indian paper money in a, in a span of one hour. I think it's kind of a trailer for the entire movie. It was an excellent uh, presentation and you have covered on every aspect of Indian paper money. So thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you for listening in. Um, hello, Rizwan. It's Pam here. Um, just a quick question. Um, on one of the earlier notes you showed, there was a spelling of Calcutta as Calicut. Was that a spelling mistake or no, was there Calicut another spelling? Was, sorry, Calcutta is different, Pam, to Calicut. Okay. Calicut is uh, in south of India, oh, okay. which is <laughs> now uh, in Kerala. Oh, so okay, it was one it. of the sub-circles of uh, uh, Madras at that time. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. I'm doing some decorating at Glen, so I'm not having a picture at the moment. <laughs> Thank you very good, much. Thank very you. good observation on the Calicut, but I'm glad you clarified because some people would have... Uh, the British don't make mistakes, Pam, in, in, in spelling. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Hello, this is Karan. I just wanted to find out, you said about a note being cut to and posted uh, for city purposes. Uh, this also has an issue as well. Uh, what happened if one of the notes went missing and could not be found? Was half the note honored uh, uh, as half the value something? No, okay. I couldn't hear your question, but I will give you the answer. And if my answer is not right, and and re ask you the question again. 
can't hear you, but uh, I will tell you. I will tell you the practice was this practice was the same in India and in uh, Sri Lanka as well. The note was cut in half. One half was sent. One. Then once the person acknowledges receipt of the first half, the second note was sent. After the person receives both the notes, they were joined together and then uh, given to the bank for encashment. There is also a situation where I've sent one half and the other one is lost. Is that the is that your question? Okay. If if it is lost, then uh, the only half the value of the uh, note was paid. Uh, meaning to say, if hundred rupees was uh, the note and half the note was uh, uh, lost and the other half you couldn't find and when it went for encashment only 50 rupees was paid for that uh, 100 rupees uh, however if somebody was insistent that uh, they wanted the entire 100 then the, it had to be gazetted a publication had to be made in the paper and an indemnity bond needed to be taken uh, in case the full payment was made. To avoid that uh, hassle, people accept, accepted 50% uh, payment and uh, were happy. I have a question. Uh, you noted that uh, there was some joint, some joint issue of notes between India and Pakistan. Were, were there also notes with Bangladesh and, and India? Nothing of uh, Bangladesh and India because Bangladesh came into being in 1971. Uh, we, uh, because till uh, in 1947, when the partition was there, uh, it, was, it was known as East Pakistan, which is current Bangladesh, and West Pakistan, which is now Pakistan. Bangladesh was the fight between, it was split between Pakistan. Pakistan became two countries. So India wasn't involved uh, in, in uh, East Pakistan or Bangladesh currently. Uh, after 1948, June. Raison, uh, Bruce Smart here with a question. Hi, Bruce. Uh, could you comment on the on the source of some of the ma material that uh, is in the museum, especially some of these incredibly rare and precious uh, early 19th century notes? Uh, yes. Are these donations? Are they in your collection? Uh, please comment. Thank you. Bruce, these uh, I've been into collecting... Uh, bank notes from uh, more than 50 years and uh, uh, this has been a tireless uh, effort of mine. I've traveled the world and my holidays uh, or travel only pertain to travel where I could uh, get or uh, get information of Indian bank notes and luckily uh, I focused only on India and I didn't get diverted to any other country. So whatever notes that I've collected pertains to India alone. To answer your question, some came from uh, uh, from the from my ancestors. Of course, that was a starter kit, as you say, and uh, some of my relatives. But otherwise, uh, these all have been collected singly by me. And uh, I don't know, Bruce, if you've seen um, my, my book, which is called. Uh, Indian paper money. The, the, 
standard revised guide to Indian paper money. It is uh, 625 pages with uh, nearly uh, 1500 images. All the notes in the in this book uh, are mine and most of these are also in the museum. Yes, uh, of course I have a copy of your of your book and I also have the original, you know, June Jubala uh, edition. Yes, yes. But uh, no, what a what a fantastic collection. Thank, thanks for sharing that. Thanks, Bruce. All right. Unfortunately, I can't see you, but uh, it would have been nice uh, that, you know, I get a face to a name. I know your name. I know you. You're probably Wait a minute. Nice. Here's my Thank face. You. <laughs> okay. Thank, you. Thank you. You are very kind. Anyone else? Yes, hi, Razwan. This is Rukmini Adahanuka. Can you hear me? Yes, I do. Yeah, hi. Uh, firstly, congratulations. The book is uh, lovely. Uh, museum I have to still see in person. Uh, and luckily, we caught up over the phone the other day. So that was nice. It's, uh, it was, it's an honor uh, to, you know, interact with somebody of, um, who's been collecting for the past 50 years. My question was actually regarding uh, the boat, the sailboat. Uh, do you have any uh, idea of the origin of that uh, engraving or drawing? Yes, this was designed in uh, designed in Nasik by uh, uh, Mr. Archer, Henry Archer, or Tom Archer, as they call him. Yeah, I th I think it was uh, in circulation even uh, uh, during uh, uh, British occupation, or was it after independence? No, oh, this was there prior to. Just go back yes. to the slide and give okay. the date. It was prior, yes. Oh. I was actually looking for some more information regarding that. But maybe I can, uh, you know, we can chat on a personal message. Or, sure, sure. Anytime. Uh, in the future. You can send me a mail yeah, and right. uh, I'll share you the information. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Fabrizio, for organizing this. Okay, thanks everybody. It was nice addressing you all and I thank you for your questions. And if someone does have any questions, please feel free to email me and you will have your answers. Thank you once again. Wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.